Hello everyone, today I'll be introducing you to the weight training and fitness unit. Now let's get started. During this unit, you will learn basic anatomy of the human muscular system, along with some terminology that will help you be successful during these next few weeks. So before we get started, I would like for you to pair up with the person next to you to talk about and write down all that you know about weight training and fitness. I'll give you about one to two minutes and then I'll take a few volunteers to share their thoughts. As we go throughout the lecture, I would like you all to fill out the terminology and muscle organize. There are already some spaces filled out Therefore, you are responsible for the blank spaces. This organizer not only makes note-taking simple, but it is also a great study tool. Now let's get started with some anatomical terminology. I will only be teaching you three anatomical terms that will be useful for this unit. The first is anatomical position. As you see on the picture on the right, the two are standing upright facing forward, arms at their sides, and their palms also facing up. This is what you would call the anatomical position. Next, two terms are anterior and posterior. Anterior refers to anything that is on the front side of the body, and posterior refers to anything that is on the back side of the body. For example, our chest is on the anterior side of our body, while our back is on the posterior side of our body. Okay, so now we will be discussing 15 muscles in the human body that are most relevant to this unit. Before discussing the specific muscle names and the rules, it is important to note that all muscles have a special role when it comes to movement. Any movement involves a muscle. Muscles in motion are either classified as prime mover, synergist, or as an antagonist. A prime mover is the muscle acting to provide most of the movement. A synergist is the muscle that assists the prime mover during the movement. It also may stabilize the joint in order to make the motion of the prime mover much more effective. Now, an antagonist is the muscle that resists the action of the prime mover. It basically causes movement in the opposite direction. Take note that this is very important for the muscle to relax in order to make the action of the prime mover run smoothly. For the next four slides, you'll be referencing to the images on the right hand side to see where on the body the muscles are located. The muscles are numbered and labeled to make it easier for identification purposes. All right, so starting off, uh, we will be talking about one muscle in the neck and head region that is called the sternocleidomastoid, or the SCM, which is located on the anterior side of the body. Its actions are to flex and rotate the head. Next, we have three muscles in the shoulder girdle. The first is the trapezius, which is located on the posterior side and is responsible for shoulder girdle elevation and retraction, which is essentially shoulder shrugging. We also have the rhomboid major and minor, which are two separate muscles and are located on the posterior side of the body. They are also responsible for shoulder girdle elevation and retraction. Now for the first three muscles in the shoulder joint. First, the pectori pectoralis major, which is on the anterior side of the body, is responsible for shoulder flexion. The latissimus dorsi, located on the posterior side of the body, is responsible for shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. And finally, the deltoid located on the posterior side of the body is responsible for shoulder abduction. Now moving on to the two muscles in the elbow region. The biceps brachii located on the anterior side of the body is responsible for elbow flexion while the triceps brachii is located on the posterior side of the body, it is responsible for elbow extension. There is only one muscle in the abdominal wall trunk region that you are responsible for knowing, 
and that is the rectus abdominis. It is located on the anterior side of the body and responsible for trunk flexion, basically bending forward. There is also just one muscle in the hip and thigh region that you're responsible for, and that is the gluteus maximus or glute max. It is located on the posterior side of the body and responsible for hip extension. Moving on to the muscles in the knee. Although this seems like a lot of muscles, they are grouped into two muscle groups. Therefore, you only have to know them as the quadricep and the hamstring muscles. The quadriceps femoris group is located on the anterior side of the body, and they are all responsible for knee extension. I will not be testing you on the four specific muscle names, just know them as the quadriceps. The hamstring group is located on the posterior side of the body, and they are all responsible for knee flexion. Again, just know them as the hamstrings. Finally, there are two muscles in the ankle, foot, and toe region that we will be going over. The first muscle is the tibialis anterior, which is located on the anterior side of the body. It is responsible for ankle dorsiflexion. This is basically bringing your toes towards your shin. And lastly, the gastrocnemius. This muscle is located on the posterior side of the body, and it is responsible for anger, ankle plantar flexion. This is also known as the larger of the two calf muscles. So before we move on, I would like for you to pair up with the person next to you to talk about which muscles or muscles you are most interested in training during the next few weeks and why. I'll give you about one to two minutes and then I'll take a few volunteers to share thoughts. We will now be discussing some weight training terminology. First, I would like to show you all this video on why weight training has been proven safe for teens. With the obesity epidemic among young people, parents are looking for ways to help their kids get and stay fit. Yes, and one possible solution is controversial, weightlifting. CBS 2's Dr. Max Gomez tells us whether kids can lift weights or do other adult-type sports. It's part of many adult exercise programs. Weightlifting builds muscle, of course, but also burns calories, increases bone density, warding off osteoporosis, and has a number of other health and psychological benefits. So then why is weightlifting controversial for kids, especially when so many of them are overweight? One of the most frustrating myths in medicine is that kids cannot lift weights. That's not true. Kids can lift weights as young as seven years of age. The key is it has to be done correctly. Kids should lift lighter weights with more repetitions. The key is doing it in a supervised way with adult supervision and doing it properly. Fred Hahn, a renowned strength trainer, has written a book describing the whys and hows of safe weight training for kids. And he practices what he preaches with his nine-year-old daughter, Georgia, who's felt the benefits. Well, when I, I used to be really slow, and then I started doing this and I got faster. But what about other athletic activities, like distance running? These days, kids tend to focus on just one sport and practice it over and over again. It's that repetitive activity that can lead to overuse-type injuries. Any repetitive motion the same exact way, the same exact time, can cause injuries to muscles, to bones, and most importantly, to growth plates, the area of bone that's actually growing. But done correctly, athletics are some of the best things kids can do. They feel better, they are stronger in their sports. Now one more thing kids should do when they exercise, and that is stretch. That keeps ligaments and joints loose enough to allow their bones and muscles to grow normally. All of which helps control weight, improve self-esteem, and confidence. Kind of a win-win-win for kids and adults. Maurice Christine. Max, did I hear that right? Age 7, you can actually lift weights. Light ones, very many reps, right? right? Reps, light and under supervision to make sure they've got good form and they're not doing something that's going to get get them hurt. But they said after seven years old, wow. a lot of reps, lightweight. That's Proper form, it goes for everyone, right? That's exactly. Yes. With the First, 
The first weight training term I will be defining today is repetition. A rep is the number of times you lift and lower weight in one set. For example, if you lift a barbell five times, then that is five reps. Next, a set is a group of reps. An example of this is when you say that you will be completing two sets of 10 reps. This is when you perform 10 reps of the lift, which is one set. You then rest and then perform the second set of 10 reps, making it two sets of 10 reps. Intensity is how heavy the weight is. The heavier the weight, the more intense the lift will be. Volume is how much. Basically, how many total reps and sets that are completed in a workout. For example, four sets of 10 reps would be high volume compared to two sets of five reps. Frequency is how often. How often a workout is performed, how often a muscle group is trained, or how often a movement is trained. A personal record is the most weight you have ever lifted during a particular lift. Continuing on, duration is how long a workout lasts, starting from the beginning to the end of a workout. Strength is the amount of force produced against an external resistance. Maximum force a muscle or muscle group can generate. Power is basically strength displayed quickly, which is the rate at which work produces, which means that power has a time component. Speed is the ability to move the body as fast as possible. For example, your running speed or how fast you could perform a barbell movement. And finally, muscular endurance is the ability of a muscle or muscle group to sustain repeated contractions for an extended amount of time. Now let's think. On the back of your notes, write down what you believe is the difference or differences between power and strength. I'll give you about one to two minutes, and then I'll take a few volunteers to share your thoughts. Now that we have reached the end of the lecture, in three to five sentences, I would like you to compare and contrast what you have previously wrote down about weight training and fitness with what you know now. That is all I have for you guys today. Make sure to keep your notes and study them for next week's muscle quiz. If you have any other questions, stay after class and I will gladly answer them for you. Have a good day, everyone. We are dismissed.